uh, investigations on soil management with respect to nitrogen mobilization and nutrient supply of grapevines on less soil. Uh, I work at the Federal College and Institute for Viticulture in Austria in Kloster Neuburg and we did this work in cooperation with Professor Redl from the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences Vienna and the private winery. Uh, so, L, as uh, we all know, quality-oriented uh, quality production is essential in wine growing to offer perfect products. There are many essential factors and, factors and uh, some of them, the one is the choice of cyan and rootstock, spacing and trellising, plant protection, and uh, one is the soil management. And concerning soil management, wine growing systems close to nature rely on a cover crop in the intermediate zone. And especially in dry areas, factors like cover crop nutrition and water supply are important and might lead to problems. And in this context, the timing of nitrogen supply of the wines is essential. As we know from the work from uh, Professor Leonard from Geisenheim, the main uptake of nitrogen takes place between flowering and the start of ripening. And there are two definite climaxes of uptake, which can be observed. Uh, one is the two weeks after flowering, and the second one, the two weeks after the start of ripening. In our studies, uh, we performed five different soil management variants, and we investigated the influences on nitrogen mobilization, nutrient supply, and the quality of must and wine. First, uh, some information to the landscape. The landscape or the wine growing region where we did the work is Vagram, it's called Vagram. There are higher terraces and hills, and the main soil type is Chernozem from Loess. The water conditions are moderately dry with moderate retaining conditions and moderate permeability. The kind of soil is loamy silt in the upper horizon and in the deeper horizon there is loamy silt, silt or sandy silt. The humus conditions are medium and in the uh, uh, deeper horizons medium to low. In the area where we did our investigations, humus content was 1.8%. Soil reaction is alkaline. This is important for the for the rootstock, and the natural soil value is described as excellent uh, with danger of water erosion. Um, we uh, made uh, soil samples, and uh, the analysis showed that supply with phosphor, potassium, iron, manganese, and zinc. Uh, is a f was sufficient or high and the supply with copper was very high. The site is in the Pannonic climate soon. That means uh, there's an average precipitation per year of less than 600 liters per square meter. So back to the uh, soil management variants. We did the investigations with the variety Grüner Wettliner. I don't know if you have heard about it. It's the main uh, variety in Austrian wine growing. And uh, this variety had been grafted on the rootstock Cobra 5PP. This is the main rootstock which is, which is used in the uh, Austrian uh, wine growing. The year before the investigations, our investigations, green manure uh, had been sown with five different varieties of clover and two different varieties of grass. The soil management uh, variants are denoted A, B, C, D, and E in the following slides, and they were performed in long lots. So the first one, A, was cover crop in the intermediate zone all year round. The second one, B, was loosening uh, the soil on the 29th of April. The, uh, the third one, C, was breaking up the soil on the 20th of May in the intermediate zone, then again on the 14th of July, and then again in August, on the 11th of August, and then a uh, cover crop had been sown. D was a combination of B and C. 
and E was loosening the soil at the end of April in the intermediate zone and breaking up the soil on the 14th, 14th of uh, July and then again in August and sowing uh, then uh, a cover crop uh, was sown. We did uh, soil samplings in May on the 17th and the 17th of June on the 19th of July on the 21st of August and the 18th of September at the depth from 0 to 60 centimeters and then uh, mineral nitrogen, uh, nitrate and ammonium was analyzed. We determined uh, shoot lengths on randomly, the randomly selected vines on two dates in, and one in July and then one in August and uh, we determined leaf area and leaf to fruit ratio at harvest time. Then we took berry samplings uh, on three times in July and three times in August and then two times in September and we determined must, must weight content of titrable acids, pH value and 100 berry weight and additional on three times in August and two times in September the content of yeast assimilable nitrogen as tartaric acid, malic acid, citric acid, potassium, calcium, magnesium, copper and phosphor. Harvest was on the 12th of September and uh, micro vinification was done of 20 kg grapes of each variant in uh, glass containers. Um, I will show you and discuss some results. One is the mineral nitrogen content, so nitrate and ammonium in the soil. The A variant day where the uh, where a permanent green crop covering uh, was, the, we, we found the lowest values of mineral nitrogen in the soil between 23 and 33 kilograms per hectare. B was loosening the soil at the end of April and we found higher values in May and July, 52 and 60 kilograms, then the clover and, gra cover, uh, and, and grass grew again and so the mineral nitrogen content raised down. C, where the um, soil was broken up in May, we found and then again in August and uh, in, in July and in August the cover crop was sown. We found uh, higher values on all sampling dates. Also with the variant T, a combination of P and C. And E, uh, here the cover crop was loosened at the end of April and then uh, was broken, the soil was broken up in July. We found higher values in August and September. Not in the first one in July, the 19th of July, so uh, it was very dry and it takes time until the, the mineral nitrogen content uh, raise up. This is the first parameter. The second parameter, the shoot lengths. And here <coughs> we found uh, differences. The lowest shoots uh, we found uh, with the vines from the permanent green crop covering in the intermediate zones. The content of detratable acidity in mast during the year. Uh, we see the, the uh, lower values, uh, the, the decrease of the value from July to September during ripening. And we found significant differences uh, at harvest time, the lowest values uh, in the mast from the vines with the permanent green crop covering. Then used uh, yeast utilizable nitrogen in must during August and September and uh, uh, the same results as uh, uh, in the parameter titratable acidity, the lowest values we found in the must uh, with, uh, from the vines with the permanent green drop covering. In general the values were uh, very high. Leaf area is the next parameter and again the same uh, results, uh, the lowest leaf area uh, uh, we found with the vines from the, from the permanent green crop covering. 
The last param parameter uh, which I want to show is the yield. And here's a trend recognizable, the lowest value uh, with the vines from the permanent green crop covering. <coughs> so 2.56 kilogram per vine or 8,800 kilogram per hectare. So um, let me sum up. Uh, wines with a continuous cover crop show shorter shoots than those in loosened upper blood variants. Leaf area and leaf to fruit ratio of these wines is significantly smaller, lower. Berry rate and yield is lower, and the mass of the grapes of these wines has a lower total acid value and a lower content of yeast assimilable nitrogen. So, uh, two conclusions. One, the first one with a continuous cover crop, there's no sufficient supply with nitrogen during the two periods of maximum demand of the vines, namely during the two weeks after flowering and during the two weeks after the start of ripening. And it seems that subsoil cultivation at the end of April in connection with breaking up the cover crop in the middle of May caused the best results of mineral, mineral nitrogen content in soil regarding the nitrogen demand of the vines. And uh, a more general conclusion under panonic uh, climate conditions which are characterized by low precipitation with an average of less than 600 liters per square meter per year a continuous cover crop without loosening up or breaking up the cover crop is not productive for the nutrient supply of the vines. So thank you for your attention with a photo from the wine, with a, uh, from a small part of the wine growing rich in Wagram and an internet link of the, to the homepage of the Austrian marketing, wine marketing company. Thank you.